Welcome back to my careers podcast and I am very, very excited today because this is my 100th episode. I've been producing this podcast for over a year now and I honestly can't believe that it's already 100 episodes. So very, very exciting. And I've got a very special episode for you this time because we're actually coming up to Christmas. So I want to talk about how you can handle your job search or manage your career if you're thinking about a career change during the Christmas silly season. And also, I want to share with you some of the top tips from some amazing podcast guests that I've had on the show over the past year or so. I've just done a selection of them because I've had just so many wonderful guests that we'd be here for hours if I did snippets from absolutely everybody. But um, I'll tell you who we're going to feature in this episode. We've got Adam Houlihan, Social Media for Business, Colin Gray, the podcast host, Jane Anderson, LinkedIn lead generation and marketing specialist, Jessica Stewart, global online styling editor, John Lee Dumas, the entrepreneur on fire himself, Ramya Fritas, a creative director of fashion brand Get Me to New York, and Tayo Roxon, the editor at Branded You. So these are amazing professionals, all with some advice on starting a business, social media marketing, LinkedIn lead generation, and how to create a successful podcast. So they're going to be little snippets from them. And then I'm going to tell you all about how to handle the job hunt during the Christmas silly season. So if you're ready, let's kick off with Adam Houlihan. The the reason I like LinkedIn so much is because it's it's just full of your ideal clients. Everyone that's sort of business orientated um, are, are there. It grow, it's growing still at a rapid rate. Colin Gray, the podcast host. I think iTunes is essential, pretty mm. much. I mean, ninety percent of the podcast listening audience out there uses iTunes as its catalog for finding shows and subscribing to shows. The thing is, it's you don't even need to be so well. People who use Apple phones, so iPhones or iPads or Apple devices, they all have a podcast app uh, by default on their device these days. So Apple have put a podcast app on there. So uh, the vast amount, amount of people that use those phones, they'll have that podcast app. They'll go, oh, what's this? Click on it and they'll start to search for shows. So you need to be in that catalog because it's so easily available. Jane Anderson, LinkedIn lead generation and marketing specialist. Social media has leveled the playing field. So if you're a solopreneur, you can access people overseas. You know, like there's so many opportunities to do that now. It's not just a locally based thing and LinkedIn allows you to do that. Jessica Stewart, Global Online Styling Editor. Um, I mean, it can take a long time to kind of really get your foot in the door and it is very competitive. But if you're passionate about it and if you love it, then you'll make it happen and you just, you know, give every opportunity a go. I think just say yes. John Lee Dumas, the entrepreneur on fire. You really need to know that you are going forward with the right topic, a topic that blends your passions and your skill set. So you're overlapping in that zone of genius because podcasting needs to be looked at as a marathon, not a sprint. And that's the thing that we're doing. This is a long game. Go for it with the long game in mind. Ramya Fritas, creative director of fashion brand Get Me to New York. Building up your social media profile. So even if you haven't finalized what your products are or website even, you can still build a customer base or a following by posting pictures of what your brand will aspire to. And I found that really helps because once you do create your products and you do start selling it and posting it on your social media, such as Facebook and Instagram, you already had a, have a good following to sell to. Tayo Roxon, editor at Branded You. Just start. I always tell them, don't be afraid to, to fail. I mean, you don't want to do what I did where you take a job uh, just because it's, it's, it's there and then you, 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 you know, you're waking up 40 years later watching Shark Tank and you're thinking, I had that idea. But I wasn't brave enough to follow it. So um, cultivate curiosity. Surround yourself with people to challenge you and motivate you and are where you want to be. 
and then um, just do it. Like, you know, like Nike says, just fail fast. Whatever mistake you make, just figure out how, to, how you can learn and, um, you know, just continue to, uh, to push forward. Well, I hope you enjoyed those extra top tips from some of my amazing guests who've been on the podcast the past year and a half. And you know, thank you again to all of them for their valuable advice and guidance and being so generous with their information that they share for us. So now I want to share with you some information because it is the Christmas silly season and many of you will be thinking about making a career change or you might actually be in the job search process right now. And should you keep up job search efforts during what can be called the silly holiday season? Is there any point when everyone else is taking long festive lunches, they're thinking about Christmas shopping and winding down for the year? You know what it's like. Sometimes we think, oh, you know, can I be bothered? Should I be carrying on? Should I not be carrying on? Am I going to miss out? I'm just wondering, are you thinking, I'll miss out on job opportunities if I scale back my marketing efforts during Christmas? Or are you thinking, I'm tired, wouldn't it be so wrong just to take a break and relax during this time? Or maybe you're thinking, is there any point in approaching recruiters or networking for a job when everyone else is focused on Christmas and family? And so honestly, I can't tell you what's right for you as your circumstance will be quite different from anyone else's. However, What I can do is give you some options so you can decide for yourself what you'll do while many others are knocking back the eggnog or Christmas cocktail. Oh, speaking of which, you may like to try one of the Christmas cocktail recipes I found when I was reading one of the Cosmopolitan uh, website articles. Um, And I'm going to give this uh, cocktail recipe to you at the end of this podcast. It's called the Frosted Coconut blitz. It looks a bit silly, but honestly, it's really delicious. So anyway, I'll tell you about it later. But before you head off on the best Christmas cocktail search, decide on your Christmas job search options. So here are the options. There are three of them. All right. So first of all, what you can do is give it a break and focus on family over Christmas and then hit the job hunt again towards the end of January. Now do this if you're feeling really burnt out over the job search process and you need to recharge your batteries. You need to clear your head and you need to have some downtime. Plus you already have sufficient financial resources to tide you through for the next four to six months. Because to be quite honest, if you keep at it when you're exhausted and lacking confidence and clarity, you'll just do yourself a disservice whenever you speak with potential decision makers. You know, you won't be able to market yourself as effectively as you can. You'll be giving mixed messages. People will just think you're tired and you won't be as impressive as if you're fresh. So meet with people only when you're well prepared and you're in a positive mindset. OK, so that's option number one. What's option number two? Second option is keep networking with relevant connections and meeting with recruitment consultants who are still open to discussing potential opportunities in the new year. So do this if you're still feeling energetic and positive about your abilities and you're clear about what you have to offer your target audience. You've got to be clear, okay? Networking at this time of year is a little easier as, as we all know, there are more social events happening. People are more open to having conversations as they're feeling Christmas cheer. Well, they do say it's the, the season of goodwill to men and women at this time, isn't it? So and also because roles still need to be filled and you might actually increase your chances of being considered as many job seekers at this time have decided to act on option one. That means take a break. So if others are taking a break, that means there'll be fewer candidates. That means maybe more opportunities for you. Makes sense, doesn't it? Or, OK, here's option three, which is probably what I think most of most of you or, you know, could be the best thing for you to do. Option three, sharpen your axe so you're ready to clear the way to success in the new year. Now, Abraham Lincoln once said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening my axe. So maybe... That's the thing to do at this time of year. Do this if you know that you still need to prepare yourself well for the job search. And what do you need to do? Update your resume or your CV with tangible accomplishments. Tangible, okay? Uh, measurable positives, the value add that you've, you've provided in any of your previous roles. 
Also, update your LinkedIn profile with a powerful tagline, compelling summary with the right keywords to enhance the search engine optimization so you turn up in relevant searches on LinkedIn. Upload a professional photo. Take a really good one. Okay, don't put a party snap and crop out your friend. Have a professional photo taken. Request for recommendations from your connections and start to share interesting articles about your area of expertise in groups that are relevant to your profession. How about doing some research? Research the industries and companies that you want to target so you know the latest developments and identify the key executives you'd like to be introduced to so you're ready in the new year. Make a networking list of people that you'll contact to set appointments for a conversation for advice, guidance and potential referrals to get closer to your target audience. And who's your target audience ultimately? It's the decision maker. So get that networking list done. Join an industry association or a chamber of commerce or join a networking group where you'll meet like-minded professionals who will inspire you. The more you get out and about, the more people you talk to, you're going to get a bit more energy as well. Sometimes it's a bit draining, so don't overdo it. But if you're in amongst people who are supportive and positive, you're going to feel more positive too. Why not, during this Christmas period, write a few short articles on your area of expertise and post them on a personal blog or onto Pulse on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the, pul- is the blogging platform, so that'll make you more Googleable. And after all, when you're in serious contention for a role, it's very likely that the screener will Google you or at the very least look for you on LinkedIn. So what do you think? Those are my quick suggestions for this silly season, all right? And the Christmas season could actually be the sensible season for job seekers. Which of my suggestions will work best for you? Do you have any others? I'd love to hear from you. So why not send me an email at jane at janejacksoncoach.com or find me on Twitter or Instagram. The handle is at Jane Career Coach, and give me a few comments or give your tips. I'd love to hear from you. And if you find me on on Twitter and follow me or Instagram and follow me at Jane Career Coach, then at least I can provide you some additional tips as well if you ask me any questions. Now, back to those Christmas cocktails for a little extra cheer. Remember I mentioned the frosted coconut blitz? Okay, so here's the recipe, guys. The frosted coconut blitz. Got a pen? Write this down. Two ounces of coconut vodka, three quarters of an ounce of triple sec, half an ounce of lime juice, a quarter of an ounce of cream, half an ounce of agave nectar, yum, and a dash of Angostura bitters. Just combine all of them except the cream with ice and a cocktail shaker. Shake it up, shake it up, James Bond style, and strain into a frosted glass. Then finally add a little bit of cream and stir and enjoy. So that was my 100th podcast episode for Christmas. Top tips for social media, podcasting, building a business and your career and also some advice on what to do over the Christmas period. So honestly, thank you so much for listening over the past year and a half. I really appreciate it. It means so much to me. And if you like the podcast, do hop onto iTunes and leave a review. Or even better, share this podcast with your friends. Share it on Twitter, share it on Instagram or on Facebook or on LinkedIn. It would I'd be so, so grateful. And I look forward to more wonderful episodes with amazing professionals who've made incredible career changes in 2017. All the best and have a very, very happy Christmas. Bye. You've been listening to Jane Jackson Careers. Sign up to receive regular career advice at janejacksoncoach.com. 